there's three possible outcomes with this video. The first one being that nothing happens, we all laugh and cry together, and that's the end of it. The second one would be that somebody has a solution or a fix to this that I'm aware, unaware of, even though that seems highly unlikely considering I've asked nearly every person on Earth, including Holly, directly. And number three is we get lucky, Holly sees this video somehow, and the engineers over there make some sort of a software update that will make all of our lives a whole lot easier. So Holly, if you're watching and you don't fix this, then f you. No, just kidding. I will say that the very first time that I used Holly, this was almost a deal breaker for me. As long as I've been tuning, I've been using both the fuel graph and the fuel table side by side and nearly every tuning software that I've ever used. I've gotten really used to it. I can just rattle off an endless amount of benefits of doing so. I'm gonna try and keep this video pretty short. Hopefully I'm not alone in wishing that this feature existed. I don't know what's gonna happen. You know what I'm, saying? I'm just happy to be here. Now, if you're new to tuning or new to Holly, you might not have any idea what I'm talking about or even referring to here. If you have been tuning for a while and more specifically have used other systems, then you know exactly what I'm talking about and you can probably feel my pain and relate to this. So let's jump into the computer. I'll show you a couple of examples of what I'm talking about and why I get frustrated that I don't have this option every single time that I use Holly. Uh, shit. So every single tuning software on this laptop, with the exception of Holly, all has the exact same feature. So we have Honda K Pro, Honda Flash Pro, Honda S Manager, Haltech, FuelTech, MegaSquirt, MicroSquirt, AM V1, V2, and a even AM Infinity. Ironically, the Infinity software froze and crashed while I was trying to demonstrate what's happening here. <sighs> I'm out of gas for the heater, so it's like 38 degrees in here right now. So if it looks like I'm freezing to death, I probably am. If we come in here to the Holly software, you can see we can open up the base fuel table and we can open up the fuel graph, but we have to do them both individually. And once you do enough of these cars, you know what a fuel graph is gonna look like. So my first line of approach on this, if I was tuning it, would be to come somewhere right around here and I would highlight and then start actually physically shaping a fuel curve but we can't do that with this software. So what we'd have to do is come in here to the base fuel table, uh, figure out about where we wanted to start adding some fuel, and then basically we're gonna have to guess. You can add some numbers manually like this, and you can see what I would assume would be a pretty normal looking fuel graph, but I'm doing it blind. So if we go over into fuel graph, you know, see it, it did a pretty crappy job or it didn't do a pretty crappy job, I did a pretty crappy job. That's one of my masterpieces. Just to where if we go into, say this software here, we basically, we wanna do the same thing. We can come in, we can highlight big portions. We can basically make a fuel graph exactly how we assume that the engine is gonna run without having to go back and forth between the fuel graph and the fuel table. So to try and do the same thing with the Holly, we're gonna have to come back, look at our graph, go back to our table, make the changes, come back to the graph, and we'll have to do that, Lord only knows how many times until we get what looks like a, a proper fuel graph. Now, if we do the same thing with, with any of these other softwares, you can just do it all at the same time without bouncing back and forth, and it makes the whole process significantly faster. So we just keep Kind of shaping this. Now, so this is really helpful even on when you're just dealing with something like this that isn't so bad. Uh, if we come into this, this is what I pulled out of another ECU. Now I'm fairly certain that this looks so bad from the, the learn table and kind of being out in left field on that. But when you start getting into these, these kind of fuel graphs, it gets really difficult to go through and smooth all of this out when you're bouncing back and forth between these two. But yes, you can use the smooth feature, which I've made other videos about how it can potentially wipe out everything that you've done. But even if we go here to like this AEM map, you can see this thing needs a whole lot of work. So if we just come in like this, we can see that we wanna add some fuel right here in this spot. Now we're able to just smooth this out way easier. And so you can do all of this just so much faster, having to bounce back and forth between the two. And all of the different softwares offer it. And then once we get to this RPM, 
and we'll start rolling over the fuel. Everything's nice and smooth and we don't have to switch screens back and forth. And now you can also see here, there's a pretty big jump between these two. So we could just grab all this, bump it up, and just being able to use the arrow keys and pop through and smooth things out. It might not seem like much, but I can promise you, once you get used to doing it this way, like if you have that taken away from you, it's just absolute torture. So looking at all of the fuel table graphically is just simply invaluable. I mean, you can look at this, and if you think about this from the standpoint of an engine accelerating through here, you're, this isn't how an engine runs. Like you're not gonna have this mountain of fuel here. You're not gonna make less power here. And you know, this is, just me poking around at it during this video has cleaned it up significantly compared to where it was. But if you're not monitoring this stuff in this way, then you end up with all these peaks and valleys and holes and you could potentially run into misfires that, you know, you have crazy misfires on a 3000 horsepower car. You know, Lord only knows what kind of parts could potentially come out of it. So definitely, even if we don't get our software update that uh, hopefully we will, just make sure you keep an eye on your fuel graph because it's very important. Like this car will probably never run correctly like this. And this one before I jacked it all up looks pretty good, but the same side of it, sometimes when this graph looks too smooth, like this one was just completely flat up top, that's also not how a turbo car is gonna run. So if you come in and you can look at this graphically, Same. graphically, one more goddamn time, and move all of your, everything around graphically, shape your fuel curve to match the horsepower and torque of the dyno. Like it's just the right way to do it. And having to bounce back and forth and losing your spot, it gets really old. One of the biggest advantages of being able to do it this way too, is to be able to make widespread changes, but also being able to view it graphically. So let's see here if I wanted to bring everything up right in this area. So I can actually kind of watch what I'm doing graphically but also highlight and change numerous cells at one time. And now you can see I have this big, huge dip right here that if I was looking at it the other way, I wouldn't even know that it's there. So and now you can make nice, clean, proper looking fuel graphs in half the amount of time. I'm not saying this is proper. It's all these demonstration things are all jacked up. All right, I know I said I was just gonna ask for one thing, but while I'm at it, I'm gonna be greedy. Basically all of these other tuning softwares, if you want to interpolate vertically, you push the V key. If you want to interpolate horizontally, you press the H key. Uh, we do have those that functionality in the Holly. Uh, unfortunately, you have to right click and then you actually have to drag the mouse and click on fill row values or fill column values. When you're sitting at a desk or at a table, that's pretty easy, but when you're bouncing around in a car or getting thrown around on a boat and you're trying to sit there and use the mouse, it's pretty difficult. So if we could just get hot keys for the fill row values and, and fill column values, that would be great. All right, uh, who knows, maybe we'll get lucky, Holly, we'll see this video and we can get rid of some of these uh, dips and valleys in these fuel maps and save a few people some motors from explosion. And other than that, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.